this week on Sport Fishing, we're back aboard the Sea Wolf. We left a few hours ago out of Emeryville, California, at the back of the San Francisco Bay. And right now we're at the Fairlawn Islands. And what we're gonna do right now is starting off catching sand dabs that we hope to use for bait to catch lingcod. So in this week's episode, we'll be out here at the Fairlawn Islands catching rockfish, and if we're really lucky, a few lingcod too. So stay tuned for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. I'm Dan Hernandez and I live to fish. All right. <laughs> I have been fishing along the Pacific coast my entire life. Oh. Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. Fishing Dan Hernandez on the Sea Wolf. of going fishing is trying different types of fishing and if you only fish five miles from home you don't get experience a lot of stuff like here we're right outside the Fairlawn Islands uh, just getting here we had to drive by Alcatraz we had to go underneath the Golden Gate Bridge it was just a lot of fun and that's one of the things I love about coming up here you never know what to expect and uh, that's what I really love about fishing. It's not so much the catching of the fish, which is fun, but it's all the experiences, the people you meet, and being on TV for so long now, I get to do a lot of that. Look at that.
trap or uh, sand dip. Fishing on the Sea Wolf. This is what happens. You catch fish, big fish, all day. Sorry, they didn't throw them in the boat, Joey. Throw them in the boat. Here, I got a fish here. Surprised me because I have a sand dab for bait. And I got this guy. Little rockfish. Be good eating. Alright, let's take a little break here aboard the Sea Wolf and go to the tackle box and give you a good look at the gear you need for this type of fishing. This week in the Tackle Box, I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing today aboard the Sea Wolf. Fishing out of Emeryville, sport fishing at the Fairlawn Islands, looking for big lingcod and huge rockfish. And it's great fishing over here. And in the old days, we used to use large reels, six O's, four O's with 60 and 40 pound test line. Well, today with the smaller reels and the heavy rods, and the Spectra line, you don't have to go with those large reels. Something small like this, something you might use for calico bass fishing, works out fine. Put 50 pound Spectra, 30 pound mono on top. Don't need to use fluorocarbon because they're gonna be fishing deeper water like 100 feet. Nice heavy duty rod. You want something with medium action, work out fine for this type of fishing. Again, you're only gonna be fishing about 100 at the most 200 feet of water. As far as bait rigs, you can go with a two hook rig with a 16 ounce sinker on the bottom as a double dropper loop rig, that'll work fine. But if the fish takes the bait off your line, you're not gonna catch any fish. That's why I like to put bucktails on. So instead of using a straight hook, I'll use two one ounce B52 bucktails, put them far enough apart so if you catch big rockfish, one fish isn't covering both baits, and you'll do really good on that. Now as far as lingcod, there's a couple ways to fish for lingcod. My favorite way, like you're seeing in today's episode, is to use a six ounce B52 bucktail with a large double A single tail. And I'll put a strip of bait on here too, maybe a piece of squid or a piece of mackerel. And all that does is when the lingcod bites it, he tastes that, holds on for a second too longer, make it easier for you to set the hook into the fish. You wanna bounce these off the bottom or hit the bottom and grind them up about five, six turns, stop, and let it flutter down. That action will really drive the fish crazy and they'll work really good. Another way you can go too is to use a one ounce B52 bucktail in a dropper loop rig. Put this above, 16 ounce sinker on the bottom and just dangle this along the bottom. The big rockfish and the lean cod will come up and bite it and it works out really good. This one ounce B52 HD comes with a large ADOT hook and it's perfect for that type of fishing. And the last way I would suggest fishing for the large lingcod and the bigger rockfish is to use a magic metal jig. A 10 ounce magic metal jig works out really good. I like the chrome, the glow in the dark works out best. And then we have the glow in the dark in the blue and in the red. Get that down to the bottom, crank it up four or five cranks, stop it, let it flutter down, and those big rockfish and lingcod will chase it. You'll do really good on it. So this is the basic gear you need for this type of fishing. Let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Not the biggest one ever, but the nice one. Liquid gold. on the Sea Wolf and Dan has been great. Awesome.
Do it here on the, the seawall. Yeah. One way to do it. Switched over to a live sand dab, which we were catching for bait earlier. Dropped it down, and I got bit. I don't know if it's a ling or a rockfish. It was a really small sand dab I had on there. So we're fishing out here over by the Fairlawn Islands. John has us on one of the reefs out here. It kind of pops up from 150 feet on up. Let's see what I got here. Got 65 pound spectra. 50 pound mono and a 5 aught 6 aught hook. Let's see what we got. Hopefully, it's the right kind. No sign yet. There's deep color. Oh, that's the right kind. Oh, no, it's not. It's a reddish fish. Don't pull that line. That'll be a delicious fish. <laughs> Let's take a break from the action here in the Sea Wolf and go to the galley and show you how to cook up one of these delicious fish we're catching. This week in the galley, I'm gonna make you up some fish tacos. This is rockfish that we caught locally here and I uh, want to show you how to make a couple of fish tacos. Nice, simple recipe. So I'm going to start off with my hot pan here. Put a little bit of olive oil. Get that nice and warm. Some butter. Let that melt up. I like to use the olive oil and the butter together. Once that melts down a little bit, I'll throw my fish on there. This is a real simple dish. You can do it on your boat, do it at home. Simple to do. That all nice and warm. Go ahead and put my fish in here. You see, I just have a little bit of olive oil and butter in there. I'm not trying to deep fry it. I just want to pan fry it. And if you notice, I don't use any flour, any coating on it. Just try to make it a little bit healthier. And I always like to cook my fish with a little bit of citrus, lime juice. Makes it smell and taste even better. I'll let that cook for a few minutes and then I'll flip it over. All right, now it's time to flip this over. It's been a couple minutes. Oh yeah, this looks good. See how it's changing colors and everything. Okay, the fish looks like it's nice and done. Go ahead and turn off the flame. And 
Now all I'm going to do is plate my fish tacos. So I have two corn tortillas. Grab a piece of fish. Now, to put on top, it's all up to you what you like. I like a little bit of cabbage on mine. Some fresh cilantro. Some peppers. You can go with um, jalapenos or serranos. These are serranos. I like a little bit of bite of that. Some tomatoes. Put them on both. And some onions. So this is what the tacos look like. Now at this point, the sauce you put on it, you have a choice. I really like the white traditional Mexican sauce. Just put that on there. But if you want something different, you can just go with pico de gallo, some chili, and just put that on there instead. Either way you want to go, beautiful fish tacos made out of rockfish. You can make this out of halibut, lean cod, doesn't matter. But these are local rockfish that we caught, and these are going to be super delicious. That's so good. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. <laughs> This is a salmon grouper, a boccaccio. Oh, it's a what? Boccaccio or a salmon grouper? <sighs> so I can put it in mine, huh? Yeah, you can keep this one. Yes. This time I used a little bit bigger sand dip and I got nailed. We just caught a nice sand, a nice uh, link cut, one of the other anglers. So when you bring these fish in, you don't want to go really fast. You just want to bring them up to the surface. And I'm just using level wine reel, 65 pound spectra, 50 pound mono. Bring it up nice and easy. It's really important when you get the link on the surface that you don't get it out of the water. You want to leave it in the water. So let's see. Hopefully it's a ling. Might be another big rockfish. But this sand dab was kind of big for a rockfish. So hopefully it's the right kind. We got Joe on my left here. Second ticket and duck hand. See what we got. Oh, deep color. Oh yeah, it's the right kind. Here we go. This is a link I just caught. Used a live sand dab right on the bottom, seven knot hook, and the fish ate it no problem. All right, let's take a little break from the action, and when we return, I'll be giving you this week's tip of the week. Thanks a lot, Joe. For this week's tip of the week, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about what we did today. And today we had outstanding fishing. Everybody got limits of rockfish. Most of the people even got limits of lingcod. 
And the number one way for the link hide was live sand dabs. Captain John took us on a spot where we caught some sand dabs, used that for live bait. Worked really, really good. A few guys got them on artificials, but the live sand dabs made a big difference. But what I really want to talk to you about is try different types of fishing. I know a lot of you fish five, 10 miles from home, never get away. It doesn't matter if you're on the East Coast or out here on the West Coast, you normally fish the same waters all the time. But try something different. Coming out here to Northern California, fishing out of Emeryville, fishing aboard the Sea Wolf, Captain John, and all the other boats out here, it's just a lot of fun. You know, very few places in the world where you can go fish around landmarks. Right here at Golden Gate Bridge, Alcatraz behind us in the bay. It's just gorgeous. Every time we come out here, it's just really great time. Thank you, John. We had a great time fishing with you, man. Anytime. Anything you want to tell the viewers about what they should know about coming up here? Uh, just dress warm. We got <laughs> variable weather. One day it could be 80 degrees. The next day it'll be 48 degrees. Yeah. Um, the fishing we do, if we can make it to the islands, we fish the islands. Um, we fish the sand dabs primarily because if we get limits of rockfish, we don't want to kill a bunch of rockfish fishing link cod, and the rockfish won't eat the sand dabs, so that's our best way of preventing uh, taking too many rockfish. Right, because so. if all we dropped down there was anchovies or pieces of squid, yep. we'd be catching a lot more rockfish. Correct. And that was nice. There was a time in the day there where we just targeted the link cod, put away all the anchovies, just fished the larger baits of sand dabs, that's how we caught them all. So try something different. That's what I want to emphasize. Try something different. If you've never been to the Bay Area, come out of Emeryville, fish with John, try the other boats. You're going to have lots of fun. On behalf of John and myself, I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing, and I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing.